Okay, so in this video I thought I'd show you how to change the colour of your LEDs on your 360 and as you can see here, this is my unmodified stock Xbox and it's got the green ring of light and here I've also got a JTAG hacked modified blue ring of light here on my other console and I like to put blue LEDs in most of my <laughs> electronics here so I've got the, the camera and the, the hard drive and I've actually even changed the the DVD remote to have blue LEDs in it as well so what I thought I'd do is kind of quickly give you an idea of how you, you change the LEDs so what you need to do is take your, your console apart, I won't show you how to do that there's tons of tutorials online about that but um, what you need to do is remove the this is the, the wireless ring of light board here and it basically just plugs into your your console, really easy to take apart. But on the surface of the, the board, if I can show you that there, there's five LEDs. So you've got the, the four around the outside there, and then there's one in the middle. And what you need to do is desolder those and obviously replace them with whatever colour LED you want. So um, what I'll do is I'll show you me taking these out, desoldering them, and putting new ones in. So I've taken the 360 apart and what I need to do now is take out the, the wireless board which you can see there in the front and to do that what you need is a Torx bit for your, your screwdriver and this one is a T8 I believe yep a T8 so all you're going to do is get the, the wee cover here just pop that off with your finger that's just a wee kind of diffuser and then you've got three screws in the front there Try and zoom in a bit. So you've got one, two, and three. So you're just going to unscrew those. That's one, two, and the third one here. So once you've done that, the wireless board should just pop straight out. It's just a, a kind of plug in component there. So now what I'm going to do is desolder the the old LEDs and put the new ones in. So before I start I'll quickly show you some of the things you need and first of all you're going to need a soldering iron. So I've got a 25 watt iron here, it's a really really cheap one, I think I paid about £5 for that. You don't need anything special. You'll need some solder. I've got some uh, basic electronic solder there. You need some LEDs obviously as well, and the ones I'll be using are 0604 SMD LEDs, and that's these things here. I'll try and show you them. And these are really, really, really small. And you can buy them in packs of like 100, 200 from eBay, and the more you buy, the cheaper they are usually. So you can also get them in like packs like this, packs of 10, but it's better just to buy them in, in bulk. And I'll be using the blue ones. I also like to use something to secure the, the wireless board when I'm uh, soldering on it. So I've got a mini vise here, and that just clamps onto the desk, and then you put the, the wireless board in there. You'll need some desoldering wire, and this is basically to soak up the, the excess solder that's going to be on the, the board. And what else, the other thing you need is some soldering paste, and this is usually called solder flux. And that basically just allows you to, well, it basically helps the heat transfer from the, the iron onto the, the components that you're, you're working on. And some cotton buds just to apply the soldering paste. Another thing I like to have is like either a pair of tweezers or a small screwdriver like this here. And that's just for moving around the, the components when you're, you're working on the, the board there. So what I'll do is I'll set this all up and desolder the, the LEDs. So the first thing you want to do is get your solder flux and apply it to the, the area you're going to be soldering on. So I'll just get a wee bit of this here and put it on the end of a cotton bud. And what you're going to do is just kind of smear it around the, the component you're going to be working on. So that should be enough there. So next thing you're going to do And just get the camera to focus there is desolder this component here and that's the 
original LED that's attached to the board. So to remove the original LED that's already in place, what you're going to do is float it off the board and to do that you need some solder and your, your soldering iron. And what you're going to do is just add a bit of solder to each contact point on the, the LED. So you're going to melt some on the end here and some more here and then some at the back. And then what you're going to do is quickly heat all these three points up and just float the, the component off the board like that. So that's the old LED now removed and you're now left with three contact points on the board which you need to clean up. So what I like to do is just get the cotton bud again and give it a quick wipe with the, the flux. Because what you're going to do is use some solder bread, which is this stuff here, and just remove the excess solder. So you just pop the solder bread down and hold the iron against it and it will suck up the, the excess solder from the board, like that. And that's it clean, ready for fitting the new component. Just like to give it a wee rub there, just so there's a, an extra bit of solder left on the board. So the next part's quite tricky and it's fitting the, the new component, the new LED, here. So what I'll do is I'll just pop the, the new one onto the board so don't lose it, you can see it's popped out there and I'll just move it there, I'm using the really small screwdriver to move the components around so just to show you on the board here this is the positive and that's the negative there and for this mod I'll be using single colour LEDs so you'll lose the functionality of the red error light but I'm not too bothered about that, this is just going to be the uh, just a blue ring of light and nothing else, there won't be any error codes with it. So you're going to get your LED here and they're really really tiny, what I like to do is just get a bit of flux on the end of the uh, screwdriver and then you can actually pick up the, the LED like that and I don't think I can show you too well but you can make, probably just make out that there's a, a kind of a T marked on the bottom of the LED there and the top part of the T is the cathode and that's the positive end so what you're going to do is line this up with the, the positive connection here and I'll do that now, or I'll try to, it's quite tricky and you're going to set the, the LED on its side with the cathode touching the, the positive contact point and the, the other end touching the, the negative so that's about it there. It's quite tricky to do this when you're trying to film at the same time. But I think I've got it. Ooh. That looks about right. It's a quite a fiddly thing to do. But that should be it in place now. So the next thing I do is get the soldering iron. I'm just going to try and tack the, the LED into place. So all that involves is touching the, the pad on the board and quickly melting the solder at either end. So that should it should now be tacked in place. So what you need to do next is actually add a bit more solder just to make a, a strong contact. A quick dab of solder there. A quick dab there. Quickly check this side again. Oh. And that should be it. So I'll just wipe up the side. Oh no, I've messed the whole thing up. So that can happen. You can quite easily knock the, the component off. So what I'll do is I'll just set that up again. This is quite a tricky thing to do. Soldering iron again. No, that should be it's tacked in place. I'm not making the excuse that uh, filming this at the same time is making it difficult. So just a bit of solder on the side and a bit here. Now, let's see. 
if that's worked. So that's it, hopefully soldered in place now. And a good thing to do is remove the the wireless board from your vice and plug it back into the 360 and just test that you've actually made a, a good contact there. So I want to test that the LED I've just soldered in is working okay. So you get your board here and you just plug it back into the 360. You don't need to bother about the screws just now because you're only testing it. And you just switch it on. And it'll take a few seconds but it should flash around. There you go and that's the blue one. So I'll just hit the sync button and it'll flash around. But, um, yeah, basically what you're going to do is the same for the remaining LEDs. And the middle one is basically just the same same idea, but instead of lying the LED on its side, you're going to lie the LED flat on the board. And that's really all there is to it. So just a quick note on the polarity of the, the contact points on the, the board. So as you saw there, I removed the bicolor LED and you're left with three contact points. So if you're just doing a single color LED mod like I've done here, the larger pad on the left is always the, the positive. So this is going to be the positive and that's the negative. The middle one is the negative. So it's the same all the way around. And for the middle LED here, you've got the, the positive on the left and the negative on the right. So I've now finished soldering the remaining LEDs in place and I'll just test it out. So you've got the middle one now blue. And the rest are all working fine. So that's good. Last thing to do is just clean off any excess solder flux that might be left on the board and you can then put the, the console back together again. So everything's back together again now, and we'll just test it out. Set the power button, and as you can see it's blue, the power button's now blue. And so is the rest of the ring of light. Cool, so it's all worked fine. Just hit the sync button, just to double check. Yep. So overall, not a really difficult mod to do. It can be a wee bit tricky in parts, like you saw when I'm trying to get the, the LED to sit properly on the, the board, but overall quite easy and I think it looks really cool. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon.